Travellers, it's Mrs Sharrock here taking the library on location. You might recognise where I am this week. I expect some of you come here from time to time. Maybe you ride your bike here, or play tennis, or run on the grass. I'm at Central Park in San Ramon, and I recently found out there's something new to do here. It's the San Ramon Story Walk. And it starts somewhere near here, between the community centre and the tennis courts. There are 20 special signboards to discover, each displaying a page from a story. So as you walk along, you can read the story. Come on, let's find it. So here's board number one, with the book cover, and the title of the story, Daniel Finds a Poem by Misha Archer. It's all about how a little boy, Daniel, discovers his very own poem with a little inspiration from some friends he meets in the park. So let's go and find board number two. So here's board number two with the first page of the story. Daniel knows all the rocks, trees and animals in the park. That's how the story begins. And here's the next page in sign number three. On Monday morning, Daniel sees something new on the park gate. A sign reads, Poetry in the Park, Sunday at six o'clock. What is poetry? Daniel says. And the next page, he looks up in surprise. Well, I'm not gonna read any more to you. You'll just have to come and read for yourself next time you're in the park. But I will just quickly show you where the story walk goes. So here we are at the end of the story walk. You know, the stories will change from time to time, so you can come back again and again to read different stories. But now, I think it's time we read a story of our own, don't you? So here's our story this week uh, to do with Percy, the park keeper. And he works in a park, taking care of it. And this story, is called After the Storm. It's written by Nick Butterworth and it's published by Harper Collins. Percy the park keeper couldn't sleep. Outside his hut a great storm was raging with thunder and lightning and pouring rain. Percy wasn't frightened by the thunder and he loved to watch the lightning as it lit up the whole park. He didn't even mind the rain. But there was one thing that Percy didn't like. He didn't like the wind. It blew down fences in the park and ripped branches off the trees. He didn't like it one bit. Oh dear, he sighed as he watched from his window. The wind tugged at the trees, making them creak and groan. 
It looks like I'm going to be busy tomorrow. He pulled his pillow over his head and tried to get to sleep. Percy was up early in the morning. The wind had stopped and the sky was clear. Percy loaded up his wheelbarrow with all the things he would need to make repairs and clear up after the storm. Then he set off to inspect the damage. He felt happy as he took deep breaths of the fresh, clean air. Perhaps the damage wouldn't be too bad. But he was wrong. Something dreadful had happened. A great big oak tree that had stood by itself on top of a little hill had been blown over by the storm. The giant tree had been one of Percy's favourites. Now it looked very sad, lying on its side with its mass of tangly roots sticking up into the air. But it wasn't just one of Percy's favourite trees. Some of Percy's animal friends lived there. Now their homes were wrecked. Percy hurried up to the fallen tree. The animals were gathered by the tree, looking cross and unhappy. When they saw Percy, everyone started talking at once. Percy sat down with his friends and listened as they told how the storm had brought down the great tree. And now we have nowhere to live, said the badger. Some of us lived in the tree and some of us lived under it, but we're all homeless now. Some of the rabbits looked close to tears and the fox was very <laughs> sniffy. Percy passed him his handkerchief and the fox blew his nose. Percy stood up. We'll just have to find you somewhere else to live, he said. Come on, everybody, jump into my wheelbarrow. The animals felt better now that Percy was with them. First, he took them to the pine wood, but nobody wanted to live there. Too dark, squeaked the mice. Too gloomy said the hedgehog. So Percy took them to the shrubbery, but nobody wanted to live in the shrubbery either. No big trees, complained the squirrels. No big roots, moaned the rabbits. Never mind, said Percy. We'll try across the stream. Percy began to push the heavy wheelbarrow over a little bridge that crossed the stream. But as he got to the middle of the bridge, two things happened. Percy stumbled and the wheelbarrow decided to see what it would be like to be a boat. Splash! Suddenly, Percy and his friends found themselves drifting downstream to where the stream opened out into a lake. Percy stood up and looked around. We'll have to paddle back to the shore, he said. But then something caught his eye. No, wait, said Percy. Let's paddle across to the other side of the lake. I have an idea. The animals looked puzzled. What was Percy up to? Slowly, they paddled the wheelbarrow across the lake. See how he's using his shovel and the badger's holding a piece of wood to help them. And look at this little mouse running along on the wheel at the front as it turns around in the water. <laughs> Here we are, said Percy. The squirrels jumped ashore and tied up the wheelbarrow to the roots of an enormous hollow tree that grew by the water's edge. Now, this is my plan, said Percy. Everyone gathered round as Percy explained his idea. Is everybody clear? Everyone nodded. Then let's get to work. They began by unloading all Percy's tools and the planks of wood from the wheelbarrow. 
Then Percy explained exactly what he wanted each one to do. He showed the badger how to use a saw, and he showed the squirrels how to knock in nails. The fox drilled holes, and the rabbit screwed in screws. The mice were kept busy fetching and carrying for everyone else. At lunchtime, they took a short break to share some of Percy's peanut butter sandwiches, and then they got busy again. At long last, their work was finished. A very tired Percy stood back to admire their handiwork. Now the squirrels had a brand new home. And so did the mice. The rabbits had a new home. And so did the badger and the fox and the hedgehog. In fact, every one of Percy's friends had a fine new place to live. Well done, everybody, said Percy. This is the best tree house I've ever seen. What about you, Percy? called the badger. Aren't you going to join us? Percy smiled. I think I'll stick to my old hut, he said. Besides, said Percy, taking an acorn out of his pocket. I still have one job left to do back at the little hill. Can you guess what job it is Percy's going back to the hill to do with that acorn? Did you notice he had a little shovel in his hand? A little trowel for digging a hole. I think he's going to plant that acorn and hope that a new oak tree will grow. You know, if you go out for a walk at the moment, you will see that there are lots of acorns falling on the ground from the trees and the squirrels are busy collecting them and the deer are busy eating them. It's a great time of year for them to stock up ready for winter. So I hope you enjoyed the story after the storm with Percy the park keeper and his animal friends written by Nick Butterworth. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you this week to read to you, but I will see you again next time for more library stories. Bye-bye.